going between you and me right now. Sir, वो ही अब तक हुआ नहीं actually. वो ही नहीं हुआ क्या? अच्छा सुनो ना. You spoke about writing poems as a child, right? Anything you can tell us right now, and we won't judge you for it. I promise. Well, honestly, it's uh, it's her big day, and I don't want to recite my own poems right now. Uh, so let this be about her and about her poems. I'll recite it to you separately. Wonderful, one-on-one -on -one backstage, one -on -one. lovely. Thank you, Kriti. Give it up for her. I think po poetry is murmur art, you know, and especially someone who does razzmatazz, who does IFA, who does all the shows which has. The sound of dhol. आपने बांसुरी को बजाया बजाया यहाँ पे थोड़ी देर के लिए. So the murmur sound, which have been protected and given platform, I think poetry needs a little bit of nudge and support, because uh, it doesn't happen without it. Uh, the way the world is going, I think we are addicted to loud noises, louder voices, and poetry is somewhere, as Poonam would sit somewhere in. I have awards, and I'll have to look for her. She would not shout out aloud. That's how the nature of the art and craft she's practicing. So thank you, Sabaz, for organizing this and calling us here. It really, it really means a lot to all the poetry lovers. To Poonam's work, I always believed in two contradictory kind of thoughts, and I see those reflecting here. One, I believe that, well. We don't get thoughts; just thought get us. We are just the medium, and somehow, you know, you got to be the best medium. In fact, I did a song which called Zaria, Tu Zaria, Me Zaria, or Uski Krapa Daria Daria. So we just passing the thoughts. But if we are just passing the thought, it looks like fatalistic. It looks like everything is dependent on nature to to give you thoughts. I think there's something called examine truth. I, I I see that the vantage point which Poonam takes in her work, a lot of the work which has been just read before me, I really like the nighty, for example, such a mundane, everyday thought being you know presented and 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 introspectively presented in front of you. I really find that inspiring. That you have looked at things which probably are. Very mundane, but very nuanced. How nuanced a nighty could be, I don't think we thought before today. So thank you for looking at life like that and presenting it to us. And uh, I would read a poem. Uh, I would have read many, but this is Miss Fitz. Uh, one thing which I, again and again coming out in her poetry is that she's brutally honest about what she feels, self-deprecating at times. And that's what uh, I think a poet has to be absolutely honest. And uh, there is no pretentious note here in any of our work. And uh, that's the essential, I think, for a, for a poet. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, Mansi, thank you. I thought I was tall, but okay. You are too tall. Hi, Poonam Aunty. I haven't got to, to meet you. You're the star today, but I will come down and meet you. Um, first of all, I want to say that uh, Prasoon sir, you just said that you know you've seen uh, Poonam Aunty at uh, IFA, of course, and she would not make a lot of noise. But I completely disagree because uh, for the past three years, I have been sitting right next to her. We've been, uh, of course, using our contacts. she herself sneaking in food and uh, she is my ct partner actually so we've been whistling at all the acts at ifa and having a rollicking time uh, but i never thought that poonam aunty could you know uh, write poetry or i mean writing a book is something that is just beyond me at least i've never read a poem in my life i don't understand them at all i have to be honest so when i came here in the evening i said oh today is a very like you know intellectual evening and i will have to tell everybody you know it was such a wonderful poem and i understood every word but i'm not quite understanding most of them but i have to say that the one that i have uh, the one that she's chosen for me i read many many times to make sure that i understood it um and i think it's just so beautiful that she writes just so um I think, like pure of heart. I think she's very simple in her thoughts, and I think that shows in her poems. So, 
I'm going to try and not ruin it. So here goes. It's called soaring. If I let my mind rise and my thoughts soar, will they take me to the moon and back? Will I float above the soft white clouds? Will I encounter an alien attack? Maybe I'll sit on a butterfly's wing and flit from flower to flower, light and bright, a perfect delight to be loved and admired from afar. I understood everything, Abhitak. Or should I perch on a strong tree branch and sway to the song of the wind as chirping birds flap gently by, some wild, some disciplined? As an adult, if I have childlike thoughts, will people around me laugh? Will they think that I'm on the brink and tell me I've gone far enough? Oh, carefree days that did amaze, I so desperately want you back. I want to be strong with my troubles gone, not always bemoaning what I lack. Struggles and troubles, anxiety and angst are constant companions as we grow. So cherish your dreams, let out those screams, for where they'll take you, you will never know. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Poonam Aunty, first of all, for uh, inviting all of us. Um, I am so, so, so happy and pleasantly surprised that you can write so well. Um, and uh, I'm so... Oh, did I say that wrong? See, this is why I don't write, you know. We are given dialogues, we say them. Uh, so, uh, I meant to say, you know, she was my cute Punjabi auntie. I never thought she was this writer, but I'm so, so happy. I'm intimidated also, but I'm so proud of you. I love you, and I hope this is the first of many, many, many books ahead. So have a good evening, everyone, and congratulations, Poonam auntie. Ajay, listen, there's a big problem. Come here. You've created a lot of uh, tension for Sabas. You called Poonam auntie. So that means Sabas is uncle. Sabas is being used called like the lover boy. You know, Sabas, my dude. So are you going to call Sabas uncle as well after this? Or you've been calling him uncle? Sir. No, but I want you to call him uncle once. I Say, no, 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 Sabas uncle. Come on, how can wife be auntie and he can't be uncle? Right, Viraf? Absolutely, okay. Just say once, try once, please. Sabas uncle. Why? This is not being fair, man. What about equality and all? No, no, no. He, sir, you know, remember the payments thing? With you also. Yeah. So, sir, it, it, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. And Poonam Aunty, I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, from now on, everyone in this place calls Sabas uncle. That's the oath we all take. All right, listen, you used to do an IFA CT with Poonam Aunty. Okay? Give us a jhalki of that, na? A little sample, please. No, I have to do a dramatic introduction for her, yeah. Come on, ek CT tum. Okay, come, okay. Huh. Achha, I have to say that uh, she was the CT and I was the face. So she would do some rubbish like that, like with both her fingers. And I would just do this for the cameras and they would get a good reaction. Oh, like that? So it was like a, a fraud giri happening. You're such a fraud, yeah, Parmiti. Just once or twice, then, you know, have to do it. Nah, sir, it was, it's, I'm a good audience member also. He's happy. He's very happy. But thank you so much, Pariniti. And Sabas, uncle, we all love you. <laughs> thank you. You know, I'd warned Pariniti. I said, listen, you call me auntie across airports. You call me auntie in every IFA you meet me across the world and so on and so forth. But today, at least, can I just be Poonam the poetess? But see, I, I, it didn't happen. I'm back to being good old Poonam auntie. OK, on a more serious note, uh, there's a very special poem that I called that I've called Let's Rise. And this I, I wrote when the terrorist attacks took place in Mumbai on 26-11 in the year 2008. Coincidentally, Sabas and I were both here attending an Ernst & Young Entrepreneurs of the Year function. Um, no sooner had the function gotten over, we went back home because Sabas, as usual, had to work through the night on various other events, and I was just tired and heading home. We left the hotel, and I think, uh, before we had even crossed Carter Road, we started getting phone calls telling us that there was something really horrific happening in the entire city, a, a carnage that was taking place, and the city was already in the throes of panic. 
Sabah still insisted on being dropped off at the office. I went home, put the television set on, and I sat there numbed, just like the rest of the world. For the next 72 hours, we watched while the terrorists really tore our entire city and what we stood for into absolute smithereens. The city as usual was caught in a trap as evil minded beings get out, continued to rack as security forces and politicians roused. Countless CTV crews watched as in the days as terrorists meandered through a hotel corridor maze leaving us all wondering if humanity would change its ways. <coughs> While grenades and guns took their deadly toll, and innocent heads and bodies continued to roll, our politicians just wondered their eyes on the pole. At home, we continue to watch it. Was this really happening, or was it just a mirror? As night turns to day, and disbelief to terror, to terror. 